I paused mid-step. My thoughts were a freight train of repetition. Emergency, 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 emergency. Every muscle contorted in gross disfigurement, and I begged my brain to power through the threatening pains that tortured my body. Every step shook with the sheer authoritarian presence of every spasm as my body demanded to erupt. I suddenly remembered the gentle breathing practices of my Lamaze classes, and I thought, yes, this will be my savior. Grasping for some sense of clarity and control, I desperately tried to focus on the calming elements of my surroundings. <laughs> the sing-song chants of relaxation swam into my consciousness, and I could literally feel my feet start to float toward a cloud-like existence. The sweat on my upper lip quivered with emotion and mixed with tears, yet I glared ahead, letting my eyes glaze over and blur out of focus so I could almost imagine the looming wall in front of me as a, as a spring field of daisies. Then, just as suddenly as the fleeting calm appeared, I was thrown back into the aching, churning, clenching chaos. I shuddered in failure as tears burned with the realization of my stupidity, and I shrank in humiliation flashbacking through all the catnaps I snuck in during those Lamaze classes. <laughs> my futile tears and sweat soaked my shirt as I hung my head and defeat, knowing, huh, I don't know how to do all that breathing and meditating crap. <laughs> I thought I would be different. I was going to be the one mother who did not have to suffer the seemingly satanic and indignant forces of biology. I thought I would easily recognize the signs and immediately be able to get to where I needed to go. I would be the one in control. I would be the supermom who stood out from all the rest and I would never, ever, the urgency to release electrified the gray matter of my brain, firing neurons incessantly over and over and over and over, sending the same signal to my body relentlessly. The all-consuming fire burned through me, and I slumped over in agony, finally giving in to the biological rhythms much stronger than any mental restraint I could possibly erect. With a sigh of contented defeat, I let the release comfort my straining physique, and it was there three aisles from sanctuary, among the frozen peas and carrots that I so desperately tried to imagine into a garden that I peed my pants. <laughs> Never before having been so gracious, re graciously relieved to see no one in any close proximity, I did what any self-respecting mother would do to retreat from the puddle of pee. I blamed my kid. I cackled loudly and hysterically, startling my tiny three-year-old twins. I swung one of the boys up onto my hip, and I jostled my ridiculously large, too expensive designer purse high up onto my shoulder, filled with all the useless crap, unpaid bills, sucker sticks, extra Lego parts. Just to declare to all the other pre-nap shopping mothers, I am fashion forward. While P squished between my toes with every step, from my Nike memory foam flip-flops. <laughs> I laughed and shrieked to the van, you crazy kid, how do you have that much pee in you? You peed all over mommy. No more juice for you before nap time. It's okay, it's okay, don't cry, it's okay. It's okay you had an accident, mommy will fix it. On the way out the door, I apologetically smiled inside to the unbelievably cute and barely legal stock boy. I'm so sorry, my son had an accident in the frozen veggie aisle. I quickly ushered the twins into their seats in the van and satisfied them with a few unmelted chocolates from my purse. And I propped the driver's side door open just a tad for ventilation and wrinkled my nose because, oh my God, asparagus really does make your pee stink. <laughs> Badly. <laughs> I 
slunk into the seat of the van. I slunk into the seat of the van and began the event of wriggling out of my sopping wet Calvin Klein's. Yet another effort to maintain high fashion and connectivity to Kate Moss and motherhood. I did silently curse myself, though, for being so high and mighty and not buying into this whole legging trend. I tried to minimize the amount of pee that actually soaked into the seat of the van, so I leaned back and scrunched down and hung my butt over the edge of the seat, proudly satisfied that I was totally getting in some cardio and core training in this event. I also smiled smugly at my genius self since I knew earlier that this earlier this morning that the dilemma of having no clean panties to wear would somehow turn out to be a blessing in disguise. <laughs> I braced my bare foot on the driver's side door, pushing it all the way open, and reached over to drop the dripping flip-flops and jeans onto the passenger side of the floorboard with a heavy plop. And I froze in terror at the word, ma'am. I turned, <laughs> I turned in my pantslessness to the unbelievably cute and barely legal stock boy who was looking at me in his own wide-eyed, humiliated amusement. Um, ma'am, um, you um, dropped this. I'm sorry, it's kind of wet. I think you peed on it. <laughs> Outstretched, at an arm's full length between his thumb and pointer finger, dangled my brand new pink zip-up sequin hoodie that I had tied around my waist, and the last step of perfecting my grocery shopping look ensemble. <laughs>